that's a fight. The drugs are just killing us. There you are. Down Big City Blues, uh, when Paul and I set out to make this film, uh, the crack epidemic was at its all-time high. From the very beginning, from the opening scene, inside the tenement buildings, that's what you have. You have crackheads sleeping in a hallway just waiting for the for the crack den to open up so hopefully they get something for free i mean they just laid in a hallway it doesn't matter what happened and and also in terms of um you had other crack dealers ripping off other crack dealers um fighting over territory in the very opening of the film also too uh, it shows a ripoff Whereas you have a, 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 a buy going down, and once the buy goes down, then you have another character comes in, and he just blows the door wide open. What's going on out here? Gang bang was itching for the melee And all ears are deaf to the nonsense Because we move without a conscience No time for pumps and suckers who ain't with it It's time to get fitted Body bags with names and tags Got your order Getting ready for the slaughter Let the bodies bang Let the bodies bang As I move into the front line Not because I'm tough, because I want mine Paul De Silva was very unique in, in, a, in a way that he had a way of doing things. Like from, from the opening sequence with the, with, the, with the titles, with the credits, he had, he had a group of girls dancing in the street. And although you also, within the neighborhoods, um, kids would be out playing in the street. And then he intercut that with all the different things that were going on within the uh, neighborhood itself, such as... Um, people on the street smoking crack and and people stealing different items to try to buy crack. Then it leads right into the crack den. I ain't no mind reader, what you want? I mean, it depends on where you lived at. They had all kinds of uh, um, structures that the uh, drug dealers were using, but this particular thing was set up, was inside a um, video store, um, which posed as a front for for the um, crack dealers and I mean you would have people line up all the way down the street and they were coming I mean all races and nationalities to buy this crack crack dealers had that power they were very empowering o over the crackheads and they would do anything just to get a hit I mean and from the character in the film here um, he had them get on the floor and roll over and bark like a dog. And these things really did happen because once you're addicted, I mean, you'll do anything. I mean, I personally saw someone, the drug dealer tell them, take off all your clothes and run down the street and then I'll give you a rock. that sleeping on the floor? Don't worry, honey. That's Miss Johnson's boy, Harper. He's on that crack trip. It's a damn shame, too. Look at him. His whole life ahead of him. The character, Harpo, um, the project, his character is, is seen in this film. 
it carries the film because it's seen through his eyes. Because Harpo had a career. I mean, he was, I shouldn't say a career, he, he, was, he was an athlete. He was one of the best runners in the neighborhood on a track team. And it shows you how when he started on crack and where it leads him through the whole course of the entire film. You best get your ass out of this building for the super comes and throws your skin out. Man, fuck The character Ta Tommy D is, is, a, is a crack villain. He's one of the, the drug dealers that have a territory. I mean, Tommy D is the, the more swank kind of guy and um, dressing well, fabulous women around him, very abrasive. I mean, it, he thinks that the world owes him everything and, and he's in control and he's going to take everything down. Kuzak and Tommy D... A meeting was set up um, between the two drug dealers from different part, parts of the city. And, and normally, this would be done very discreetly, but Paul chose to do it inside a restaurant. Sounds glamorous, but it never is. So it's pretty, pretty cold. And I don't know, if you work before the crew gets there. Have you had my map now? Yes, we're gonna go, I'm going to go get another one here. As far as when the budget's low and the time frame is short, uh, what we do is uh, we have access to like stack cameras for reproduction. Uh, what we do is, like say for instance here, you take a look at this one we've designed. Now, this was reproduced by a Xerox machine. A master was made and has a, a dot screen, yeah. you know, basically for uh, reproduction on a Xerox machine and was run off. So we ran off a couple of yeah, still lasted for a good while. And uh, we go to like the uh, poster match. Malcolm King, Hendrix. And uh, basically they were inexpensive to put them up and it looks good. Brooklyn style. Her, she just graduated from a drug rehab program. You know she marched Jesse Lee's and James Wright. Is that right? Well, go ahead, young lady. Thank you, Mr. Clark. You do your own? No. It's okay. Well, that's it for you. Yeah. This is a people's problem. I seen white folks trying to get up. I seen white guys selling the shit too. That's right. Black folks are selling the black folks. Black like selling black folks. And I don't like you. I'm in school and I'm getting a hell of an education. You hear me? And I'm gonna be somebody special. So you keep counting your own money, cause I'm not gonna be no drug lookout money console, drug hustler for you. My life is my own and you can't control it. With education, there's power and I've got plenty of it. Now is there anything else I can do for you? The days are real long, and the uh, schedule is real tight. But however, you know you can get just as much done as you can on, on a uh, 
just about you know most everything done on a major motion picture but just that you just don't have a lot of the luxuries but however you can still do a very powerful film something <laughs> 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 you know don't with him him don't worry about don't with him tommy d he lived a life of luxury but he too soon was di because we doing you know what i'm saying school food and ruling i'm zach i'm the dealer crack i felt victim to that man but i'm on dub baby when we take them out they don't come back Afros. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I'm going to have the Uzi scene today, right? Or we're not doing that today? No Uzi to see today. Oh, okay. No, not today. This is when you just come in at a restaurant and harass the restaurant. You'll see. Oh, okay. It's very simple. So uh, we arrest her? I thought Tommy D arrested. We he comes and harasses, and you guys come in to work a drug deal. Oh, and you all start arguing. Oh, yeah. But I'm saying, isn't that the same scene where we leave afterwards? And then, we'll and then we get the, yeah, yeah, but the Uzi scene? Yeah, but that's, we, that's exterior. No, 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 that's, no, no, that's exterior. That's another thing. Yeah, but I'm saying that's the reason I wore the jacket. Because I'm okay. on the Uzi scene. Good. I'm glad you did. So the you know, continuity stays correct. Right, so I can't wear the little jacket because if the Uzi's going to be I'm glad hanging right here, right? You use your head. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So trench it down. Yeah. Fine. Alright. Excuse me. We can't just sit there and lay down and uh, have the drug dealers uh, influence our kids uh, in a, in that negative manner. You know, we have to do whatever we can, we have you know whatever we can do to make sure that we give uh, provide a safe environment, a positive environment for our youths. chair, grab the chair, and slam this here. Now what I want to catch though is uh, Jalissa leaving, remember when you said get the out of here. So the first thing we got to do, you got to be standing, exactly, okay? So you stand up and um, at this point you would have taken your coat off when you sit down to this point, so you can take this coat off. Okay, Jalissa, come here. She says, damn, you gonna stand here, he's gonna tell you, this is how it's gonna go. Get the out of here. You walk off camera, get beyond that chair. I pay a waitress, and I'm basically, I'm dealing with drug, drug dealers who come into the restaurant and approach me and ask me if I would like to work for them. Um, I think it's very powerful and very important that um, people understand, young people like myself, that money is not the most important thing in life, especially when drug dealers approach you. A lot of young people, all they think is about money. You can't, you have to have morals. All right, first position, quiet, and action. Get the 
away from you. Here you go, man. Come to that. Okay, continue. Damn, another fool killing. Damn, another fool killing another fool over drugs. That's all you see in this paper every damn day. Death and drugs, drugs and death. Damn. You know, most of it is those damn hard rock generation teenagers. It's a damn shame. And this drug dealer was 13 years old. Can you believe it? A 13 year old drug dealer. And this drug dealer was 13. Say what? Where was your head at when you were 13? In the door in the school. Oh, I heard that. Yeah, that's great. That is fun. Okay. Um, you come in, same as lines as usual. We just need that. We're going to shoot you up in a second when we get this job goes in the door. So you come in, same as usual. Run the line, same as usual. And slap him five, sit down, and start talking. Okay, there's, there's a lot coming from here, okay. so I think it would be better to start our last okay. dialogue here. Okay. Okay, it would start from her to that guy. Okay. Yeah, she has quite a. Oh, what's happening with her? What's happening with her? Another fool killing another fool over drugs. That's all you ever 
see in this paper every damn day. Drugs and death. Death and drugs. Damn. You know, most of it is those damn hard rock generation teenagers. It's a damn shame. And this drug dealer was 13 years old. Can you imagine that? A 13 year old drug dealer? And this drug dealer was 13? Say what? Where was your head at when you were 13? Into going to school. I heard that. What do you say? Yo, here comes cool Yo, here Zach. Comes cool Zach. Okay. You stand here. You go over and grab the chair. You grab a chair, and you guys walk in like gunfighters. Okay, so. They're gonna push you in a chair. Okay. You're gonna be standing like this. Leon's gonna push you like in a chair. Don't hurt you. Underneath the table. Underneath the table. Underneath the table. Third box. Second box. Third box. You wanna make it? You wanna make it look like you push when you're gonna. You're gonna. You do the reaction exactly. Here. Steve. The two of you all are like. And. It's a heated thing. Okay. Just you all grab your chairs. You grab the chair, spin it around. Boom, boom, boom. chair around. To you. To you. Yeah. Like Just this. like this. He's going to sit. Or boom. boom, like this. And this, this, boom, like this. So it's real close. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you yeah, see what I'm saying? Yeah. This will be bad. Yeah, Later yeah. on, we'll work out something for a shot yeah, over here, yeah. over here, like this. And you speak your Around yeah, just the way we did it before. Then yeah. you leave. We just want to capture this. We'll capture all these other angles later. Okay, but I just want to get this head on window. Okay, because the light's going to go, like my man said, in the next maybe 40 minutes. Okay, so let's get ready to do this. Do I jump from this and just go directly to the bathroom? Because that's not the line. Just jump to it. Yeah. Okay. What's the line? Put it on the line. I'm going to put my piece on this. You, want, you don't scare me. I'm the new alcohol in this neighborhood. That's the whole line. Then it goes, I'm bad, I'm packing, I'm pretty. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Here we go. Stand by. Stand by. That's right. Stand by. Okay. Right. okay. Right. Rehearsal. Let's rehearse it one time. In action. I'm his mouthpiece. Put your mouthpiece on this. F all y'all. Yo. You don't scare me. I'm the new Al Capone of this neighborhood. I'm bad, I'm packing, I'm pretty, and I kill any one of y'all to try to take what I got. Brooklyn is mine. Good, 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 good. And action. Oh, wait. Yo, man, come to who's that? Okay, come in. You can make a thousand dollars a day, a thousand dollars a day, count money for me. Do you want the job? What's it gonna be, baby? You know, Mr. D, that sounds so good. Sounds easy enough, but what happens when the cops come and bust us, huh? Or what happens when your boy, cool Zach, tries to shoot you over the turf, huh? Or shoots me for being with you? Or wants some kind of crazy event and hurt somebody in my family, huh? No, thank you. You see, I won't be a waitress forever. I don't do drugs, I don't like drug dealers, and you know what? I don't like you. I'm in school, and I'm getting a hell of an education, and I'm gonna be somebody special. So you keep counting your own money, because I'm not gonna be a drug look on money counter for you. My life is my own, and you can't control it. With education, there's power, and I've got plenty of it. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Who's the man? She's a man. What is this? I'm not with her, right? Tommy, why don't you just slap that? Yeah, get the f away from me. You. you don't scare me. I'm the Z and I want Brooklyn. Man, you got the Bronx and Queens. You want over 100 crack dens. You wrong, man. Look, D ain't gonna go for it, man. You don't scare me. I'm the new Al Capone of this neighborhood. Word. I'm bad, I'm packing, I'm pretty, and I kill any one of y'all to try to take what I got. Brooklyn is mine. The two drug dealers meet, and then they discuss on how they're gonna break up the territories. Um, oh,
on a norm you might not really see it but also what Paul wanted to show is that how um, the drug dealers have the community so intimidated by their presence and what they were doing and and driving people out out of the neighborhoods or making people stay in their homes and and be afraid so he this kind of scene here that's what he was trying to get because as soon as those drug dealers come in here uh, they shut the restaurant down and they run everybody out of there Now enter the vigilantes. Now the vigilantes, Paul Vision, was to have them symbolizing um, the fight for what America wanted to really do, which is fight against the drug dealers in the neighborhood. Now, did those things kind of go on? Who knows? Maybe so. But that's why, you know, but back in the day uh, in New York, they had Bernie Getz, who was on the subway system. So, but Cho, uh, Paul chose to do this kind of thing in, 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 in a very structured way that, okay, now I'm going to bring in my own kind of vigilantes to try to force the drug dealers out of the neighborhood. When you buy drugs from the drug dealer, you're supporting the devil. That's right. You know, within the community, although a lot of people are afraid of the drug dealers and things that, that were going on, as even today, but you always have that one person in the neighborhood that stands tall and strong. They don't care. They will risk their life to say what they want to say and how they feel, no matter what. The drug dealer must die! Yeah. But even still today, um, you have the drug dealers fighting and they have they ride by shooting and some innocent person gets taken out for no reason. in the film, uh, which are the, the, the civil rights activists. You have um, uh, Marisol Carrera playing the love interest of, of Jim Hill, who, who's the activist, um, who would be similar to uh, uh, like Sonny Carson, uh, who was a civil rights activist back in the 70s. They did a movie about him called The Education of Sonny Carson, and then he would fight for the community rights and anything that was going bad or going wrong in the neighborhood. He, he, he would be there standing strong and would be there with the community. So, yeah, that's the, that's the kind of character that um, Jim Hill played, and, and it was very strong and, and intimidating the, dr the drug dealers. The drug dealers did not intimidate Jim, um, the character that, that Jim Hill played. You know, you got a lot of nerve coming in my neighborhood, walking up and down the street with this death to the crack dealer like you somebody. I'm right somebody. Yeah. In fact, I'm gonna make you and your Mongolian horde seem like Boy Scouts. Right. Yeah. What you gonna do when these same drug dealers you wanna put out blow up your house, huh? What you gonna do then? You're doing that right now. Every time you have your gang wars and you're shooting at everybody and hitting everything yeah. but the target. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry, right? When we shoot at your ass, we won't miss. Kuzak is the man of the neighborhood. He can have any woman in the world. But um, his love interest, Ebony, D who's played by Ebony Diaz, which which is his conscience. 
Well, they were very long hours. I remember us just getting together like at five in the morning. And the coolest thing about when you're working on a movie and when I did Crack Down Big City Blues was that the photographer had to take pictures of the scenes. And everything had to constantly be put in the right position. I had to be in the right position when I was thrown on the floor by Stu. And then they didn't realize how low we were going to go. So they had to shoot it again to do a close up because they ended up just seeing the back of Stu's head. <laughs> The both of them work well together, and, and like she was like she was fed up with them because she said, before you you know you didn't you had to make this kind of money, but now that you have everything, it's it's all about ego, so that's what she felt about about um, Kuzak, that he no longer had to really go out there and be wild and make this kind of money and shoot him up. It was all about being uh, egotistical. I don't know you anymore, Zach. At first you did that because you had to. And now you do it because you like it. You're sick. You're so up, baby. I'm sick. I like it. I'm into it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to f*** your money. I'll give you a spinner, don't you? Don't you? Yeah, baby. I like living large. Cold getting paid. Clocking dollars. You know what I'm saying? And I never quit till you motherf***er. Get a city get to. Crack is very, very bad. Drugs period is bad. And the minute you try to to cut off the drug dealer's money, you really ask him for your life to be taken. I mean, many people's lives were taken for for trying to shut down their crack dens or, or shut down their, their drug op operation. So this is the junkie that wants to change, huh? That's what she says. We shall see. What's your name, homegirl? Jean. Jean. Hey, Jean. Um, I play Jean, a junkie. Um, and um, I like the role because um, you see her change. You know, you see her where she hits really rock bottom and she's low. Um, and then through the course of the film, you know, she goes to rehab and to work out her problems. And she reforms. So I like the role because you see her through the different stages. She made an egg to get hot, home girl. She Ain't that right? It. She knows it, man. Yeah. She's been stealing. Yeah. Old people mm -hmm. getting busted left and right. And I am an anti-drug activist, the uh, girlfriend of James Wright. Wait, let me and we're fighting together um, in the community, trying to get these kids off drugs. We're trying to really get the community together to help us um, fight the drug dealers, trying to push them out of the community, and mostly trying to educate these kids, which is apparently the only way that they can get out of love. Drugs. But it's fine, it's a learning experience. Man, she even stole her mother and sold it to get high. <laughs> I'm not put her right now. And she's been laying on her back ever since to get high. Because as a Latin person, um, believing in such a cause is something very important to me. It wouldn't have meant as much to me if I were playing maybe a, a drug dealer or just a junkie. My character is a very strong woman. Um, She's very strong women. She's, she's a fighter, and it's something that I like to do. Something that uh, I enjoy doing. She means something. Hopefully, people will look up to somebody like Jessica, which is she's very much like Maria Hernandez, the woman that got killed uh, by these drug dealers. And there's so many women like Jessica fighting the community in Washington, Oklahoma, all over the place. It's this drug problem is really spread. We have no guns. What we do have is the rehab center, and it can help. Please, let's just concentrate on the rehab, James, okay? It's okay, Jesse. It's okay. Please don't let him do this to us. <laughs> so eventually, um, the Shantae Williams character um, get off a of crack, which is extremely hard, you know, but she elevated to a different level uh, while she was going to, to the drug rehab, and then she meets this other young lady named named Rita, um, uh, who is played by Rhonda Ross, the daughter of Donna Ross and Barry Gordy. And she's on crack, and they had this drug um, intervention going on, a, a rally. Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright, sir. 
I want to go into your drug rehab program. She introduces her to um, um, Jim Hill, the, the civil rights leader, who's also in charge of the, the drug rehab program. And then you have the drug dealer, Tommy D, comes in and, and try to um, influence her to stay on crack. I want to change. Come this way, please. Rita, you don't want to turn your back on this, do you? You know I have the best around. Because usually when people are addicted to crack, I mean, it's very addicting, is, and it's a struggle to try to resist it. And what ends up happening here in this scene Sister, is that it doesn't happen. She resists him, and, and she away. enters Sister. the program Sister. to straighten her life out. There's no charge. It's on the house. You can always come back later. Come on, let's go get nice. Let's get busy. Come on. Rita, Rita. My name Rita. is Jean. I was Rita. on crack. Hey. I know how bad you need it. I know how bad you want it. But I'm off it now. I turn my back on it. You can too. And this man right here, he can't help you, Rita. Rita, don't take his death. Come on, I can help you. But you gotta help yourself. Walk away from him. Take the first step. Come on, let's walk away. Come on now. Go ahead, take the first step. You got the nickels and dimes. Go ahead, baby. Get nice with the rock. Do it for me, baby. Come walk away. Come on, we love you now. Come on, let's just walk away. You can do it. Just look inside yourself. Come on. You can do it. Come on, Rita. Go ahead. Walk away. Go ahead. Don't you worry. Do it. Walk away from Now the vigilantes, let me tell you about them. Um, these guys were trained martial artists and also trained in weaponry. Uh, what Paul's thinking was in terms of the bringing in these characters into the film, he was thinking of something similar to like the Guardian Angels that Curtis Lee was started um, back in the, the 70s, whereas he, he had a whole bunch of martial artists who were on the train, they, they had their TAMs and, and that, that the TAMs were red and, and they had the t-shirts with the emblem and everything on it, but most of the people that were with him that was in that group, they were also martial artists and they were vigilantes, so to speak, but I wouldn't say vigilantes, but they were there, representing the people and looking out for the bad guys that were on the train. So they were patrolling the trains in New York City. <laughs> Check out this 357 Magnum. This shit can knock down brick walls, man. <laughs> Do you have laser sighting? Laser sighting? Nah, baby, not on that. I hear that. <laughs> Check out this 45. <laughs> this will take you back to the future. It's clean. You damn right it's clean. Weapons gotta be on point, man. Yo, man, everything is cool. What's up with you? What's up with you? What's that, man? Don't be doing that, man. What's cool, man? How much for the whole set? Four grand. Four grand, that's all. That's all it is. We'll give you three. Three? Yeah. Yo, my man, what I look like to you, Willie Poopoo, man? I gotta make a living too, man. And it's insurance if you're drug dealers. It's insurance if you're cop killers. And it's insurance if you're bank robbers. It's insurance if you're hitmen, Shut man. Oh, you think I'm up? You think I'm up? You think I'm up?
<laughs> like they always say, karma. What goes around comes around. Well, unfortunately for, for the Tommy D character, um, he was shot and he was laying here dying against the Keith Heron wall. And the character Harpo saw Tommy D laying there and he needed his help. And what he did to um, Harpo in terms of the treatment and how he treated him, Harpo looked at him, stole his clothes, and left. <laughs> well, as everyone knows that you just can't just go and just take the law into your own hands. That's why we have a, a, a police state, a police country, which you have law enforcement that is there to um, protect the, the uh, lives of the um, citizens. However, now we see that the vigilantes end up in jail um, and eventually a lot of the, the drug dealers end up in jail. But most importantly is that, is that Harpo um, turned his life around and decided to leave crack alone and join forces with, um, with, with, with the drug rehab program. And although he was being tried to be persuaded in the end, but it didn't work. Production. Uh, getting back to one of the most difficult scenes that we shot in Crackdown was the warehouse scene. Um, we shot that to the wee ends of the morning, and um, um, we we were there working hard in the choreography, and. It was very, very difficult and uh, very strenuous. I met them on an audition, Paul uh, De Silva and Fraser Prince, director and producer, and uh, the audition was tough, but they said I got the part. Uh, and for the rest of that summer, I understood what work was, what work meant, and why it was important to get there first and leave last, because that's exactly what the director and producer did, and I respected that. <coughs> It was my first uncoordinating gig. Uh, I played the bodyguard to Tommy D. Oh, 
It's very grueling, a lot of work, long hours, but Paul De Silva believed in me. And in this industry, that means a lot. He gave me my first gig. And I remember the day he got me on set and I was all shaky and nervous. And he said, listen, this is what you want to do. If it's what you love to do, never give up. And I will never forget that as long as I live. The breakaway boss, boss it, huh? My experience by, by working with, with Paul um, on Crackdown Big City Blues is actually going to college <laughs> and getting a uh, diploma, uh, a degree in filmmaking. Um, totally different. I didn't know, all I knew was everything was behind, uh, in, in front of the camera. I didn't know a whole lot about working behind the scenes. Paul wanted me to do this roundhouse kick and one of the characters, um, Leon, um, and I did a spinning back heel kick and I came too close to him and I busted his lip by accident. I mean, I was traumatized after that. I mean, my whole night was just ruined. I mean, those are the, the accidents and things that can happen on the set. Um, whereas an actor accidentally get, gets hurt and, and, and the choreography, it's not that the choreography was bad, it's just that it was the timing. My view is as a, my view as a filmmaker is to approach uh, the subject matter to the best of my ability. By making a film on drugs, I don't uh, intend to come out with all the answers to the problems, but uh, as a filmmaker, make people think about the problem as a whole. The community is taking this news Here's what they had to say. If you ask me, they're doing the city a damn service. I hear that. After a while, this place will be like the old west. Everybody's shooting everybody. It's like that now. Shit, I know that's right. The system right is right, but everybody wanna do some. The scene is deadly. The time he's deep the screen so those like the ugly. We um started transferring the sound effects into 35 mag and then Added them on, I edited them on the movieola for the punches and hits, and Paul was very finicky or fussy about the sound. So if it was a little too overdone, he didn't like it. And if the gunshots, he was very selective, or, and we had large choice of what guns we could use, gun sound effects we could use. So with that, there was a lot of extra time put into the soundtrack, and then he was finally pleased with it. And then we took it off to Magno Sound, who mixed a lot of big Hollywood films and films also made in New York City. And the mixer, Michael Jordan, was a uh, Dolby rated mixer. And he took on the project to mix it. And we thought he did a really good job of balancing it. And also the uh, soundtrack for the um, music that was originally scored for the film. I had two fight scenes I had to choreograph in Crackdown Big City Blues. One of them was outside in the alley where these drug dealers were selling crack. I walked up to the drug dealers and I handed them the money and act like I was a crack head and they handed me the crack. I threw the crack back in the drug dealer's face and he threw a cigarette butt in my face and I beat up all the drug dealers in the street and left them laying there. The actors I fought in the alley weren't part of any type of fight team that I had. They were accomplished martial artists. As a matter of fact, a few of them knew Aikido, Japanese Aikido, which deals with locks 
and holds and rolling out and throws. So I choreographed that whole scene for Crack Down Big City Blues. It was great working with them because I was able, they were able to follow my movements as I was striking them and showing them how I wanted the fight scene to go. Tempo Karate is a series of rapid hand and foot movements that are used to maim or kill an attacker in a life-threatening situation. I also use Taekwondo kicks. My style is a little different from Ralph's style because Ralph studied Filipino stick fighting. We have a little stick fighting in our system, but it's not emphasized like Ralph's Filipino stick fighting. Ralph also studied Jeet Kune Do as well as Kung Fu and some other systems as well. I studied Kung Fu also, but for Crackdown Big City Blues, I use mainly Kenpo and Taekwondo kicks. Training the vigilantes in Crackdown Big City Blues wasn't difficult at all because I only had one vigilante to, to train and that was Tajay. Tajay was one of my students for a long time, so that wasn't difficult at all. What I had to train her in was how to strike her opponents without actually making contact just letting them move with the blow. And I had to teach the actors who were actually the stuntmen for her fight scene how to move with the strikes and the kicks that she was putting, putting on them. Get them all, one by one. Let's face it. The whole damn country is losing this war. Let the bodies bang. Let the bodies bang. Even if you're weary. And I'm a kick in the face, but don't fear me. I just want to get you out of the You went to the top of the... It was tough making Crackdown, but it's the work I love. You just learn to live with it. You learn to get along with the crew, the cast, everyone involved. And uh, here's a look at some behind the scenes. Enjoy. Hopefully this will come. It'll be all over here. Did you ever go hungry? Did you ever go hungry? Of course not. Yeah, but how many kids did you kill? How many kids did you kill? Huh? Your feet hurt? Huh? How the fuck? Huh? Your brother, chill, chill, man, chill on man. Shut the up. You don't know me. Towards the end, we kind of just fall away into the background. With them. It's mostly a single and turning into a two shot. Yeah, and I don't want that to And particularly when you're listening. Like, you know, when you're listening to her, it's like, you know, 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 it's like,
Okay, um, I guess you want to shoot up okay. him next now. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. I'm getting that now. Because basically what we're getting is him. See, him, when he comes in, that's what I want. That's why I want him to get touched. Thank you. Wow, that's a lot. I can't believe you're not doing this. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I met Gene and, and James Wright and the whole gang. And like, I'm a new man. They're gonna help me get some clothes. They're gonna help me get myself together. Cause that smoking, man, ain't happening. Ain't happening? Ain't happening. You know, here I am, I stole from my mother. She gave me everything. And I stole from, I stole from my friend. Man, I feel worthless. I ain't good for nothing. I ain't good for nothing. I ain't even good for the ground that we walking on. I'm ashamed. Gene, show another celebrity. Yo, Gene, man, we got a celebrity in the house over here behind me, man, from MSG. He's trying to do it on the quiet storm tip. When y'all put it together, he's right over here. It's G Man. Hey, yo, what's up, baby? Whoa. Um, they've got Rico. Some, they've got what's up with your character? What are you doing right now? What is your I'm character? waiting for rehearsal. My character is Jade, and I'm a very, 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 very rich. <laughs> because I'm a drug dealer. Right. Okay. You're, you're... Oh, is it is it much more comfortable? It's marvelous, darling. Marvelous. Marvelous. Figuring. Things are just moving so smoothly. I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I, I tell you. It's uh, the difference between uh, what did someone say, <laughs> night and day. <laughs> I kill me. Can, can you see these good like this? I'd rather them not be in the hands. You'd rather them be in the hands, right? Yeah, that's nice. It's real clean if it's in the hand. Okay. We had some. We can stay careful, man. That's what I'm on. You see the whole crew and shit. Watch your head. We're shooting a movie, I'm telling you. I don't, you, you're an expert at this, so. No, no, this is, hey, Harpo, how do I hold these, man? Conceal them from the cops. Don't worry about it. Mouse, mouse. <laughs> but they got to hold them up. They see that hand up for one second. No, this is okay, what? Hold on, let me. When he says, he needs to get his hand up. I'm trying to hold them where I won't drop them. You can't see him. I can't see him. Lift them up. I can see Jersey. him. Don't you can see him? That's perfect, right? Uh, Let's show you a little trick. You can see his two fingers. You're starting to do it just like that. Two fingers like that. Bingo. And then it's like, then it's just like that one. You know, at the height. Of the but see, the trick is you're going to have to arrange that in your hand when you go to take it out. Well, actually, I could hold these. Right, I could I could have these because nobody sees from here, right? I could have these already like this, right? When I come back, I go, do you choose life? And they already like that. Or death. Magic trick. Magic trick. <laughs> a couple of days. A couple of days. A couple of days of rigging. You know, wiring, power, you know, dropping the sky pans, adjusting the light. You gotta build the set. It's a whole bunch of stuff that has to go with that little tedious but that's what movie good. making is I mean everything about movie making is like you're only shooting one piece of film at a time that's why it's like you may watch it in two hours but it takes three months to make crackdown means a lot to me it has a lot of sentimental values as well as nostalgic um um, my my best friend and partner Paul the Silver, who's now he's deceased. Um, we made this film together, and this film is his life. I mean, so it means a lot to me, and um, and um, we we work together 
to put this project together. I mean, because of my experience from working in law enforcement, working in narcotics, and also living in a neighborhood and, and Albany projects, and seeing all the drug dealers and epidemics going on, uh, we both, we put this together and to really show people what life was like back then, but also it's relevant today because they have the abuse of drug um, um, opiates is running rampant now and heroin and all these things are no good. How drugs just come in and not only destroy you, but destroy the lives and destroy the neighborhoods. A film produced in the 90s is making its national debut with a special screening in the Poconos. This is the first time the film is ever being shown. Pocono Cinema and Cultural Center on South Cortland Street in East Stroudsburg will screen Crackdown Big City Blues starting at 7 Friday night. The anti-drug film follows the story of a community in New York driving local drug dealers out of town during the crack e epidemic of the 90s. Creators say even though the movie goes back nearly 30 years, the message is still relevant today. If, if you're going to put the movie out, I want to do something with it as far as with meaningful that's going to help the community. So, so we plan to have, to have a screening here. All proceeds from ticket sales will be donated to the Carbon Monroe Pike Drug and Alcohol Commission. <laughs> The movie is about a, a small community in New York City, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, rather. Right. Try, trying to push the drug dealers out. Mm -hmm. It took place during, during the late 80s. Of the story, But we shot it in 1990 and finished it in 1991. But, just, uh, but it's been sitting on the shelf. So now it's finally getting its release here. You, you'll be able to buy it on, on Blu-ray. Through Amazon, you can pre-order it, or you can watch it on um, Bounce uh, Brown Sugar. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on streaming sites and cable TV. Now, what were some of the influences that made you pick up the pen to even pen this movie? Well, I didn't write the movie. The director wrote, wrote the movie. Okay. And he, he's deceased. He died okay. In Oh wow, rest in peace, yeah. R.I.P., yeah. Right, but he, he, he wrote it, produced and directed, and I was the co-producer on it. All right, cool. I'd like to welcome you all. This movie, uh, wow, was the very beginning for uh, quite a few of us. Um, the director and the producers saw something in myself that I didn't even know that I had. Um, I get a little emotional because, again, this was a long time ago, and, and you know, some of the cast members are, are no longer here. Um, on my behalf, I've got to let you know you're probably going to see some bad acting because remember, I just got started. But <laughs> uh, Mr. Coke Swiney. I just wanted to say first off that believe me when I tell you, Stu did do a bad job. On you. And it is an emotional thing, but the point is we got through it. Uh, it was my first son coordinating job. I'm a martial artist since I'm three years old, gymnast, dancer, professional ballet dancer, the whole nine. So getting me is a weird kind of vibe because the stunt coordinator never knows what to do with me. He's like, do we put him in a tutu or? <laughs> but, um, what was beautiful for me was Paul was a teacher. He taught us. I stifle you as far as your creativity. They want a certain thing, and, and I'm not belittling that. That's what the budget wants and that's what the company wants. So we really loved independent film because you got to show your stuff. You got to be creative. And Paul would ask you, what do you think about those lines? And should we change those lines? But we love the stunt part. So at one time, Paul had told us, he goes, okay, Steve, you died, but before you die, you gotta say some words. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Just kill me off, don't worry. I don't wanna say any words. No, you gotta act, continuity, continuity. <laughs> and now, it's, it's my pleasure just to introduce the producer of this movie, 
who is a very good friend of Paul De Silva. He also was a New York City detective, as I was. I got him by 15 years. But he was in narcotics for five years. You have to imagine those that know anything about New York, especially Brooklyn, to be in narcotics for five years. As the Jewish people say, that takes chuspa. <laughs> so without any further to do, Mr. Fraser Prince. Thank you all for coming out. And I also thank Stu Large, Cope's wife, Stephen A. Young, some of the cast from, from the stars of Crackdown, Big and Blue. So I thank you all for taking your time out and coming down here. And also I'd like to thank the audience for taking your time and coming out here. Thank you, I hope, I hope you enjoy it. But it's about the community banding together to run the drug dealers out of the community. Yeah. The important thing, what are we doing as our neighbor? What are we doing as our best friend that's addicted to oxycodone or the Percocets, right? That they're crushing it and they have or Xanax and they're having it with a glass of wine. You need to talk with them. You need to tell them there's a better way and give them the alternatives. I'll leave my phone number if you know anybody that's addicted to drugs and they want to deal with me. My number is 609-827-0982. Like I said, I'm out the churches. And let's start becoming solution-oriented. Stop looking, stop pointing fingers, and let's just get together, love each other, and help one each other out. Thank you all for coming out. I just want to uh, say a special thanks to the, the cast people. And where is um, David? Okay, David is here, Paul, Paul the Silver's brother. And all of the, the cast members of Crackdown. I want to acknowledge Hank, we used to work together at Narcotics. We did the streets in New York. Right? Big City Blue screening at the Pocono Center and Culture Center. We're at a full house tonight. It seemed like everyone enjoyed the film. And um, make sure you catch it at a, at a city near you. It's going to be available on Blu-ray. Uh, you can order it, pre-order it on Amazon.com. Or you can see it on a streaming site, Bounce TV slash Brown Sugar. <laughs> Okay, cool. Alright, you got it? Okay, cool. Alright, you got it? Don't let you one second. 